Resuming debate, the Honourable Member for Edmonton, Strathcona. Speaker. And I wish to begin my comments, Mr. Speaker, on motion M430, by sharing in his own words the personal challenges of my friend, Rupin Sambasavan, an inspiring young Saskatchewan High School honours student. In quotes, people who might have a disability face a lot of challenges in getting employment. Right now, I'm in grade 12 with cerebral palsy, and I'm taking a career exploration class. I can't use my hands very well, therefore this limits my career choices. That is one of many obstacles in my way as I get older and look for a career that suits me. Transportation is also a big concern, especially in winter. I can't drive, so I need to look for different ways of getting where I need to go. When I was a child, I had many support systems, such as adaptive technology, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, and grants from children's charities. All my medications were paid for by the healthcare system. I had a terrific support at my school. My transportation was provided by my school. I can't write, so I need an education assistant to help me. If it wasn't for them, I would not be where I am today. All of my teachers, all through my public education, have been wonderful, and some of them have adapted assignments of activities for me. I have a laptop and adaptive hardware and software in my school. I also had specially built furniture to suit my needs. I didn't have to pay for any of this. Saskatchewan Abilities Council has also supported me and they continue to help me participate in recreational services and at little or no cost to me. I feel very grateful that I've had all these resources for me to succeed. But when I turn 18 this month, some of these services will no longer be available to me, at least not for free. I will be considered an adult and I will have to find and pay for these services, including transportation, medications, some of my therapies and the technologies I require. Someday I will have to live away from home. If I don't have a job, I don't know how I will pay for basic needs as I get older. Employers have to be accommodating to employees with disabilities. Depending on the job, I would need social hardware and software, special hardware and software, to allow me to access a computer. This is something an employer could do to make it possible for me to work. They need to understand that I have a right to work, even though I'm disabled. They should not pay me less because I have a disability. Employers and co-workers might need training to learn how to adapt to working with a disabled person. Government should see that everyone should be treated equally. If we need special equipment or resources to do a job, they could help by providing an allowance for transportation if we can't drive. They could help employers with the cost of job adaptations and equipment. Governments can provide funding to run training and employers and workers that could help them to understand special needs. I hope I have a bright future ahead of me. I want to be a journalist and I know that I will have to attend post-secondary. When I'm done my schooling, I hope there will be sufficient resources to allow me to join the workplace. Thank you, Rupan. Mr. Speaker, clearly we have an obligation to reach out to more people with disabilities to improve their employment outcomes and enable them to contribute fully to their communities and to the economy. For example, one of my constituents, who will be 50 this year, remained unemployment for many, unemployed for many years until he was able to receive funding to obtain employment skills. After far too many years of desiring useful employment, he finally found a job with training, which he remained a contributing employee for 14 years. A remarkable achievement for him and the dedicated staff who support him. Employment outcomes for people with disabilities would be far more bleak were it not for nonprofit organizations, including in my riding, Adaptabilities and Employabilities. Adaptabilities provides day programming to help youth develop employable skills. But similar to other not-for-profit groups whose goal is assisting these marginalized, they struggle to find funding. Mr. Speaker, I participated in their annual fundraising games and walks where they cheerfully organize and support the events um, through the staff, the volunteers and parents to ensure that these children benefit from the programming. Mr. Speaker, Employabilities is another Edmonton nonprofit organization who've served Edmonton people with disabilities and barriers to employment and employers since 1974. Their goal is inclusion and opportunity for Albertans with disabilities through career information and job placement services. Mr. Speaker, we should applaud the dedicated work of these volunteers in our communities, filling a void left by both government and the private sector. 
This government has lauded its skills training programs, but we've heard little mention in this budget of intensified government investment in enabling disabled Canadians with policies ensuring greater flexibility, training, transport, and accommodation for the disabled. Where, for example, can we find in the reforms to employment insurance is the consideration to the supports and services required by a disabled woman living in an isolated community or a reserve who have lost their job and now is expected to travel 30 kilometres to work. The question before us is, does this motion fully address the critical remaining roadblocks to equality in access to training opportunities and the workplace? Is this just another public program we should be downloading to the private sector? Well, the, notion, the motion is well-meaning and the volunteer efforts of the member are absolutely laudable. It's almost entirely focused on the private sector and what they should be doing alone or in partnership with governments. Yes, business does have a role to play and those who invested in special training for disabled workers should be lauded. A series of studies and reports have already been funded on what the private sector can do. What about government? Why no call for the government to finally step up and deliver on its languishing domestic and international commitments? Why no call for action by the government on the myriad recommendations in the 2008 Standing Committee report, including new tax incentives to employ disabled, school-to-work transition plans for disabled youth, special attention to disabled Aboriginal Canadians? Yes, as the motion mentions, Canada did ratify the UN Convention on the rights of persons with disabilities. But ratifying delivers nothing concrete, and this government's record on implementation is dismal. Its follow-up report is over a year delayed. It has failed to appoint an internal monitoring agency. It has refused to sign the optional protocol. It has failed to institute any basic indicators of progress. Mr. Speaker, in 2006, Statistics Canada reported that 2.5 million, or 11.5% of Canadians, aged 15 to 64, report some form of disability. They also forecast that as our population ages, the percentage will rise. Sadly, the highest rate of disability is among Aboriginal Canadians, 31%. It's not clear if those figures include challenges faced by those suffering mental conditions or homelessness as well. It's reported that adults with disabilities without higher education are the least likely to be able to find employment, certainly that provides a living wage. But even those able to achieve higher education have almost half the chance to be employed. These inequities in access to education, training and employment were revealed to the House as far back as 2008. And the response, another study underway. The call in this motion, Mr. Speaker, is for a youth employment strategy it echoes repeated calls by the New Democrats. I would support, presuming it included, targeted attention to the disabled, but the call for greater accountability must also be extended to the government, extended to this government for deeper action on its promises and commitments. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.